Hello and a warm welcome to federal special program Capital Beat. 2024 elections, there have been question marks over the transparency of the election commission, especially over the voter turnout data. Yesterday, a delegation of civil society members visited the election commission of India. They submitted a a petition which was endorsed by more than 4,000 4, people, and they demanded that the poll body should publish the voter turnout data, which has been recorded as part of the part one of the Form 17C. Now, what is Form 17C? At the end of the polling, every presiding officer should record the voter turnout data in that part one of 17C and furnish the copy of that form to the polling agents, but this wasn't done. After 11 days, Election Commission published the data, and the data which was published showed an abnormal enhancement. The estimated voter turnout was around 60, and when the final figures came, they were around 66 and 67 percent. So this uh, delegation of civil society members demanded uh, the Election Commission to furnish this data immediately and also caution them for the coming phases of the Lok Sabha elections. Uh, uh, joining me now is transparency activist uh, Anjali Bharadwaj, who was also part of the delegation yesterday. Thank you so much, Anjali, for joining. And uh, were you able to meet the election commission yesterday? What was your meeting like? So, Neelu, let me just uh, say that we went to the election commission to submit a copy of the petition, which more than 4,000 people across the country from different states of the country had signed. There were five of us who went in a delegation to submit that petition. Uh, now, the ECI, at the ECI office, we were denied even entry. We were told that one person could go in to give that petition. When we said that out of 4,000 people, only five had come in a delegation. It was a totally peaceful delegation comprising of uh, very senior, retired public servants, of academics, some activists. There were five of us in all. Uh, we were denied entry. Uh, we were told only one person can go. We were told that there is no public dealing at the election commission, and uh, which I thought was really very, very shocking because in, during the midst of elections, when there are so many concerns that citizens have, uh, certainly it will not add to public trust if there is not even any public dealing in the in the election commission uh, we uh, we were told that the commissioners were all in office and so was the uh, all the officers and uh, when we said if there was any possibility of meeting and explaining what what was written in the uh, petition to anyone in the commission whether it was the commissioners or even uh, one of the officers in the commission we were told they were all in a meeting and there was no public dealing. So we've submitted that. Uh, two people went in finally. We were made to wait for over an hour. Uh, finally, two people managed to give this uh, particular petition in. And we hope that some action will be taken because I think what we are seeing very concerning uh, trend in this election, which has continued from the last election of 2019 as well, is that the election commission of india is seen to be doing certain things which are shaking public trust in this very important institution which has been mandated by the constitution of india to hold free and fair elections you said nilu that um, the voter turnout data uh, you know you explained what has happened so essentially Actually, when phase one took place on the 19th of April, we were waiting for a final announcement, which usually happens within 24 hours of the polling happening, and nothing came on the final voter turnout. 11 days later, the Election Commission of India put out the final voter turnout, which went up by 6% points, which is very unusual increase. So uh, on the 19th at 7 p.m. after the end of voting, the election commission put out a figure of about 60%. And after 11 days, it put out a figure of more than 66% voter turnout. Then also what happened was that only percentage 
figure was given, not the absolute number. Now, you can imagine that when we are talking about polling of millions of people, giving a percentage figure even of two decimal points leaves a lot of scope for numbers to be not known in absolute terms. Now, always we have known that the election commission gives out absolute numbers. This time, percentages were given instead of absolute numbers. The second phase also, there was an inordinate delay in giving out this information and nearly a 6% increase was again noted in the voter turnout. All of this raised serious questions about the authenticity of the voter turnout figures because we know that uh, how elections are fought in our country and very often within a margin of about six percent parties can win or lose so uh, any it, you know a voter could be supporting anyone but as a voter as a citizen in the country we have a right to know the correct and the exact figures of voter turnout now all that we have demanded is that the election commission of india put on its website part one of form 17c form 17c is the authenticated voter turnout it registers exactly how many voters voted in a polling station this is something which is given by the presiding officer to the ro and the ro within 24 hours in fact, the same day sends it to the election commission. So what we are asking is not for the moon. It's a very simple thing that the ECI, if it has will to do it, it can do. It just needs to ask the ROs to just take a photograph or scan and put on the website of the ECI these form right. 17C part one, which will let people see how many people voted in that election. But Anjali, what is more concerning is the fact that uh, there is a rule that uh, the polling officers, uh, the, uh, the returning officers need to sign that Form 17C, give the copies to the polling agents. If that is a rule, and if that rule is not followed by the election commission itself, which is conducting the electoral exercise, what does it really show? What kind of a commentary is it really on the part of the election commission? So you see, uh, Nilu, what is the rule is that every presiding officer in a polling station is supposed to give an authenticated sign off and, and give a, a polling agent who's present at the end of polling a copy of the Form 17C. This is supposed to be done. The polling agents are also supposed to be there and sign. So this, in any case, is being done. If it is not, then we need to know because that would be a serious violation. All that citizens are asking in the petition to the Election Commission, and this is something we have been demanding of the Election Commission from the 30th of April when this entire uh, you know, announcement was made by the ECI and there were doubts that were raised, that simply put, all the form 17 c part one on your website let people be able to verify now there is the question then becomes that don't you trust the election commission do you think something wrong is happening well we are not even saying that we are simply saying that in a democracy there is no other way to make sure there is public trust you have to be transparent you have to share information with people authentic information and we are saying that the authenticated voter turnout is written in part one one of form 17c if the eci does not comply with this request for basic transparency by citizens then it will raise very serious questions of what is the eci trying to hide and i think that it's very important and that's what we have written to the election commission in our our petition and we are hoping that the election commission will take cognizance of this request because we have the right to information in this country nilu you saw how the supreme court upheld again one more time the right to information of citizens in the electoral bonds case so we have the right to information the election commission must immediately comply right so do you think that uh, four uh, phases of the elections are over and now the three phases, do you think Election Commission is going to do that? Has Election Commission already published the data? Because I haven't checked the website. 
you must have you went as a delegation also has it published the voter turnout data so far look the election commission has not published part 1 of form 17c so far anywhere and what we have been given repeatedly phase after phase are not even absolute numbers of voter turnout they are just going on putting out percentages now let's let's uh, break this down nilu imagine that there are 1 crore people in the country who are going to vote in in uh, the election in any uh, phase now if the election commission says that there is a, a, a 5.05 percent also they don't give the exact numbers if they that means that it gives them a room of nearly five five lakh votes to play around with so if today the election commission which is calculating the percentages on the basis of the absolute numbers that they have if they don't tell us the absolute numbers only tell us the broad percentages then how do we know exactly how many votes were polled? And then later, if there is a there is a um, you know in, uh, increase also of the vote uh, the voters who went there the voter turnout, we won't even get to know in absolute numbers because there is no number that is being given out by the election commission. So simply what we are saying is that the election commission must put out absolute numbers of voter turnout, not just percentages and should give people the option to verify by putting out form 17c part one so they can see that in each polling station how many votes were polled we have in fact in our petition also asked data from the election commission which they already have which is that constituency wise also the breakup of voter turnout should be provided on their website this is data that they have and there is really no reason for them to deny this data to the citizens. But what happens, Anjali, supposing if uh, the elections are over and the election commission still doesn't publish uh, uh, the part one form C uh, on its website? So what what does now what what will people like you do who went uh, as a delegation who tried to submit a petition to the election commission? Uh, you've not been properly heard. Your concerns have not been addressed. So what happens if it isn't addressed till the end of the elections also? So, Nilu, there is a, a matter which has been, there is a petition which has been moved in the Supreme Court by ADR, by Common Cause, where the court has been moved to direct the Election Commission of India to put for Part 1, Form 17C, in the public domain. But the court, can, that can be its own process. As citizens in a democracy, we have a right right to ask the election commission to immediately put this data why must the election commission wait for a supreme court direction to give this basic information to voters that is the real question and i think what we are seeing today is a big question mark on the credibility of the inf uh, the election commission and that i think is very very concerning because like we always say in a democracy elections should be free and fair but they also should be seen to be free and fair and that is the job and the mandate of the election commission of india so if they don't do this and eventually they do it only when the supreme court directs them to do that will also show that the election commission is not showing a commitment to voters right to know and not being committed to transparency and uh, submitting itself to accountability. But uh, when you have to fix the accountability of uh, the election commission or the chief election commissioner, uh, we saw what happened in the Supreme Court when the hearing for the EVMs was on and the EVM verdict when it came out. And, you know, it, the, the bench seemed to convey in indirect terms that there is no scope to doubt the election commission. Why should we assume that, you know, election commission is doing wrong? So in that case, do you think that the courts can really intervene in fixing the accountability of the election commission? Because at the end of the day, election commission is also a constitutional body. And why would courts intervene in that matter? To what extent can they? So it's, it's very, it's very simple, Nilu. Nobody is doubting. We are simply saying that as citizens, we are 
asking the election commission to put out certain information into the public domain which it readily has this is about people's right to know let me uh, very clearly state that in a democracy when we say that people have a fundamental right to know when the courts say that citizens have a fundamental right to information it is not to say that we are doubting anybody we are doubting the commission we are doubting some ministry it's not about that it is about a fundamental right which is guaranteed under the constitution so what has been moved in the supreme court also and what we are also saying to the election commission as concerned citizens is not that there is uh uh you know something wrong that you are doing we are simply saying that in a democracy for people to have public trust it is important for them to have information these three things one in order inordinate delay in putting out voter turnout figures after phase 1 and phase 2 of elections two only giving percentages not giving absolute numbers which is happening pretty much for the first time uh, in all these elections that have happened in india and number 3 this large increase of 6% in the voter turnout figure these three things put together have raised doubts in the minds of citizens which should be allayed by simply putting out information in the public domain we are not alleging that anything wrong has happened we are simply saying that there are doubts and the best way for public trust right. to be ensured is if information is put out in the public domain Anjali, as far as uh, the violations of the moral code of conduct are concerned today telegraph has uh, put out a beautiful story and they have put out figures that you know most of the complaints regarding the prime minister amit shah anurag thakur i mean these are the star campaigners against whom the complaints are pending no action has been taken but uh, with the others the action has been taken election commission has given the figures so do you think that election commission will at all take action or is it going to come as a delayed action which will ultimately serve no purpose unfortunately what we've been seeing nilu is that there is very selective action that seems to be taken by the election commission of india uh, we saw this in the 2019 elections in fact the citizens commission on elections which i was also part of which was chaired by justice loku pur uh had found that even in the 2019 elections the way the election commission of india function raised serious questions on its conduct there was very selective action that seemed to be taken by the eci when there were complaints for example against namo tv against certain uh, speeches that were given by hate speeches by the bjp leaders by the prime minister there was no action taken there was a lot of alacrity with which action was taken against members of the opposition party we are not saying that action should not be taken against the opposition party but what we are saying is that that there should not be selective action that the eci should be seen to be taking um in fact in 2019 if you remember mr ashok lavasa one of the eci uh, commissioners uh, had to resign because when he was giving a dissent note because he was not comfortable that no action was being taken properly by the eci against members of the ruling party when complaints were made against them uh, his dissent note was not allowed to be recorded and uh, he was finally forced to resign from the election commission now this is what we have been seeing since 2019 even this time during the elections the election commission of india its conduct has been very very concerning if we look at the kind of action it has taken against star campaigners of the ruling party including the prime minister it really makes a mockery of the of what we expect uh, of the eci to do in cases of violation of the model code of conduct we saw how very openly a uh, uh, hate speech was given by the prime minister targeting a certain minority community and no action was taken by the eci till there was a huge pressure that was mounted publicly and when they gave a notice instead of serving it to the prime minister they they issued the notice to mr jp nadda who is the president of the bjp and did not even name the prime minister 
or use the word prime minister or his name in that complaint so it was a uh, you see what we are really seeing then is that how is the eci behaving in such gross violations of the mcc in a secular democratic country like ours and what signal does it send out and we are seeing that it does take action it suspends a lot of people's uh, canvassing if they feel if uh, in the opposition party if they feel there is some violation why is similar action not taken against uh, you know the ruling party and the, uh, the leaders of the ruling party so i think there are these questions there are these doubts which should not be allowed to creep in and the actions of the eci should be really above board because when you're talking about free and fair elections it is about a level playing field the eci is supposed to ensure a level playing field not destroy it so we cannot allow in the uh, general elections of the largest secular democratic republic in the world uh, for this kind of thing to happen and the election commission of india has to ensure that which hasn't happened and the telegraph story is pointing towards that thank you so much anjali for joining and we'll have to wait and watch whether election commission at all publishes this data as far as the form 17c is concerned the next phase of uh, the polling is on 20th then again that's going to be crucial and all eyes would be on whether the form 17c is given to the polling agents whether that voter turnout data is published or not and that would really test the credibility of the election commission once again thank you so much anjali for joining and one appeal to the viewers who are watching this interview subscribe to our channel send us your feedback and stay tuned to the federal thank you